Cheers, friends. Hey there. Welcome to Times Square. And join us on a little adventure around the Big Apple. This time we check out Hudson Yards and the west side of Manhattan. I must have indulged in every slice that we came across. We were really blown away by some of the fantastic sights we saw, both incredible and not so much. And we're going to share it all with you, where to be and what to see on the west side of New York City. So this should be another quick room tour. It's the Hyatt place. Downtown, you first walk in, to the left is a little desk. Off a seat, you got a little chair. And this actually looks to be another bed. You're right. We got a small closet, a little coffee station, ice bucket. Down here, you have your safe, a nice mini fridge. Here, you got some extra blankets, almost a full size mirror. You do have a TV with Chromecast. Some lovely artwork. Here's our bed for the evening. Both night lights, the night, <clears throat> both sides of the bed have these lamps, some outlets, a USB. That is nice. Your alarm clock also has some extra USB. And look at this stunning view of New York. Well, at least we get some fresh air. But it's like 60 degrees outside right now, so we're going to close that. So a little privacy for the bathroom. Nice sliding farm door. We have our toilet, our sink, nice big mirror, and a semi decent sized shower. It's weird, the controls are on one side. Water comes out the other. Overall, the room was good. The bed was comfortable, the shower was nice. The hotel did offer a very nice breakfast buffet, but I'm not sure if one of the elevators was out of service because there's always a huge line to get into the elevator. We were staying on the third floor and felt comfortable taking the stairs, and so that's what we did every time we came into the room. We made our way over to Hudson Yards, a neighborhood on the west side of Manhattan. We wanted to check out one of the newest observation decks called the Edge. Hudson Yards is also home to the vessel, the High Line. It's the largest land development project in the United States right now. It's a huge complex of skyscrapers, luxury shops, trendy restaurants and parks, all built on top of a working train yard. And it's awesome to see how they do it. This giant beehive honeycomb looking thing is called the Vessel. It has 154 flights of stairs, 80 landings for a grand total of 2,500 steps, all just twisted around and around. Sadly, no one's allowed to walk up the stairs anymore due to safety concerns. You are allowed to walk through the ground floor for an awe-inspiring view through the top. The edge is located within Hudson Yards. The observation deck is 100 stories above the ground, with a 360 degree view of the city. The one thing that I found really interesting about the Hudson Yards neighborhood is that it is a model for sustainable neighborhood development. They actually have five acres of greenery throughout the Hudson Yards community and they're able to collect, store, filter, and recycle 10 million gallons of storm water to water all of that vegetation. It actually only takes a 52 second elevator ride. The elevator ride is experienced all of its own. With video displays on every wall, it gives you this artistic display while it rockets you up to the observation deck. The edge has walls of angled glass that allows you to have amazing views of the city as well as the people walking below. It also has a glass floor in some areas. Now you do need a ticket to visit the edge 
and you are able to specify times. Imagine the sunset from up there. And if you really want to test your nerves, you can pay for the city climb experience or you get to hang off the side of the building at 1,200 feet in the air. There is a champagne bar with drinks and snacks to enjoy while taking in the amazing New York City skyline. And this is Pier 55, or The Little Island. It's a really unique and beautiful space. It's a great place for a walk, having a picnic, or just relaxing and enjoying a stunning views of the city skyline. And it's not just a park. It was designed to be an event space. It has an amphitheater that can seat up to 700 people, as well as smaller stages and spaces for more intimate performances. You might be able to catch a concert, dance performances, or even a comedy show. Unfortunately, nothing was going on the day we visited, but it was nice to get out of the concrete jungle for this beautiful green space. The park was wonderfully designed with a winding path through lush gardens that break your line of sight so you're never sure what was around the next turn. Throughout the island are interactive sculptures and art installations that make it really fun to explore. When you walk into the break bar, you feel like you've walked into any other bar in New York City. However, just as the name suggests, after you finish your drink, and of course you've signed a waiver, you are invited into the back throwing range that has been decorated with different targets and you're able to smash your glass. There are also buckets of glass available for purchase that allow you to break beer and wine bottles. On this trip, we mainly use the subways to get around the city. It's not the prettiest or the best smelling way to get around the city, but it is cheap and mostly efficient. They've updated the toll system since the last time we were here, and you no longer need a Metro card. You can just add a credit card to your Google Pay or Apple Pay or your smartwatch, making it way more convenient than carrying a card and having to keep track of a balance. Cards are still available if you do not want to use a smart device, but they do have a nice deal if you're here for a week or so, from Monday to Monday, after you've paid for 12 rides, the rest of your rides are free. Most rides are about $2.75. Well, there are several Freedmen's like all over the city. We came to the one down in the theater district, which is kind of nice. Um, they advertise in the evenings that they have live music, so I think a lot of the actors who work in the theaters maybe work here in the evenings if they're not on the stage. But we came down in the morning, and so since we're down in the theater district, we can go get in line for a rush. If you're not sure, there are several ways you can actually get theater tickets. Obviously, you can order them online and purchase them ahead of time. They also do lotteries, usually the day before or maybe the week before, where you can get tickets at a lower price. And if you still haven't gotten a ticket, usually the day of, you can go to the box office several hours ahead of time and just get in line and they'll have several tickets still available for purchase day of, which is what they call the rush. It's worth seeing a show, especially if you're already in this theater district, so we're gonna go try our luck. Each theater and show has its own way of selling its tickets, so be sure to do some research online before heading to the box office. We decided on the piano lesson. 
mainly drawn in by the headliners Samuel L. Jackson, David Washington, and Danielle Brooks. And they all gave amazing performances. Through the rush, we were able to get second row tickets, but they were all the way to the side. So it was a very obstructed view, and we didn't get to see much of the play. And the stage lights were in our eyes for most of the play. But what we did experience and saw, we really enjoyed. Now, everywhere you go in the city, you're going to find these dollar slice pizza places. We can pick up a slice of cheese pizza for a dollar. I assure you, not all are created equal. So the first time I came to New York many years ago, cab driver recommended that I take the pizza slice tour. That's where you start with these dollar slice places and start working your way up to more expensive slices so you can get a great perspective on what's really a good slice. And now for this very official and scientific study into the culinary arts of New York pizza, I did add pepperoni to all the slices. Obviously I'm going to get a few bites of just cheese, but I wanted something with a little more flavor. So we're starting off with a $2 slice of pizza because the topping is an extra dollar. We're starting off with 99 cent fresh pizza. They have several locations around the city and been slinging slices since 2001. The outside crust was soft and pillowy and the pepperoni had a decent flavor to it but there was no sauce and the cheese was very sparse. Maybe worth a dollar if you're passing by. Next up is Food City Cafe and Pizza. This slice costs $3 with pepperoni and just looking at it, I can already tell it's gonna be worse than the first one. The crust was thick for a New York slice so you couldn't get a decent fold on it. And yes, folding pizza is the proper etiquette for eating any New York slice. The pepperoni did have a bit of a kick to it it was kind of hard to see how much cheese was actually on there because there was no sauce. It was pretty much just crust, cheese, and pepperoni. And next is Famous Original Ray's Pizza. They've been serving slices for over 50 years. And just by looking at it, you can already tell it's way better than the first two slices. With plenty of pepperoni, you can actually see the sauce. The crust is just starting to brown and it has a little bit of cheese overhang. I've gotten a slice here every time I've been to Times Square and never been disappointed. And my top slice of pie for the visit, we found at the Chelsea Market. Filaga Pizzeria touts itself as a traditional Italian spot. Probably best known for their thicker Sicilian style pizza, but we're here for the New York slice. Here we got the Diavola. You know it's gonna be good when they got a fancy name for a slice with pepperoni. This slice was well worth $6. Just look at those beautiful pepperoni cups of flavor bombs just waiting to go off. The tomato sauce was light and flavorful, not acidic, not too sweet. The pepperoni was amazing. The cheese was that perfect chewy blanket. The crust was thin and barely keeping it together and just disintegrated in your mouth. Needless to say, we will definitely be coming back here and this pizza has ruined all other New York slices for me. Thank you friends for coming along on this little journey through the Big Apple. We're really grateful for all the friends we've made here on YouTube and your continued support. We love hearing your thoughts in the comments. And here's another video YouTube thinks you will like. We hope you'll keep exploring with us. And until next time, friends, cheers.